Well, hello everyone. Welcome to 2021. Thanks for joining me for my first Astro Weather Report for the brand new year. It is lovely to have you with me. To anyone who is new to astrology, I am going to share with you how the planets are going to affect your life personally this week. Big welcome also to my old friends who tune in with me every week. It is as always lovely to have you with us and to my Patreon family. Mwah, bless you all and uh, big kisses and hugs to you guys. Well, as you may have noticed, if you follow my program regularly, you may have seen that last year at the end of the year, I was looking a bit worn out, a bit tired, a bit frumpy, and I decided let's turn over a new leaf in 2021. It's been a tough year, 2020, but in 2021, let's start to sparkle. So I put my sparkly top on and I'm like, let's make this year special. Let's do the best we can with the energies that we've been given, work with them and bring some beauty to the world. So thanks for joining me. We're going to explore how we can do that this week. For those who aren't aware, I'm now offering astrology reports, written reports on my channel for as little as $20. So they are a bargain. This is how thick they are. You can see like so many pages of information. They're great reports, beautifully presented, beautifully illustrated, beautifully written. And if you would like to dip your toe in astrology and find out a little bit more about who you are, or what's coming up for you in the year ahead, or how to handle money or wealth, or any of those pertinent issues, synastry reports, relationship compatibility reports, they're all there. Check out my website, www.guidingstarastrology.com and go to the page listed as Astro Reports. There you can pick and choose which one you would like. As I said, for as little as $20, get your report, find out all about astrology. And if you wanna go deeper, then come and get a reading with me or do a webinar or what have you. But this, with these reports, it's a great place to start. And finally, in my little announcements section, if you are interested in a big overview of 2021 from me, then check out my friend and astrologer, Rick De Clemente's channel, Astrology Unplugged. On Thursday evening, American time, I did a big session with him and all his beautiful viewers. And we talked about what is coming up in 2021, what's the overall big picture. So check that out. Go to Astrology Unplugged, tap in and find out what I have to say about 2021. But let's find out what I have to say about 2021 and this week of the year. So how I work, for those of you who are new, I break down each of the energies that are occurring of significance this week. And then we will look at how one of those energies is going to play out and affect us in the week ahead individually, sign by sign. So you can go to the timestamps in the comments section to find out what I have to say about your sign. But I highly recommend enjoying this introductory bit, um, getting the most out of this that you can, because it's going to color what I have to say about your particular sign. And there's just so much more depth and richness by listening to this intro. So thanks for the people who listen to the intro every week. It's actually very valuable. So the first energy we want to explore is happening on the 17th. That's um, Sunday the 17th Australian time, Saturday the 16th in other parts of the world. But we're having a square between Jupiter and Uranus. Now this is actually playing out pretty much all week long. A square aspect is 90 degrees between these two planets. Here's Jupiter in Aquarius, there's Uranus in Taurus. This is playing out all, all week um, in the lead up to Saturday, Sunday, wherever you are in the world. And also we'll be feeling its influence in, in the, um, the week ahead as well. So very noticeable energy, this one. What does it mean? Well, it's a time for meeting interesting people. Uranus is eccentric people, creative people, bohemian people, and Jupiter expands things. So you may very well find more bohemian people in your circles of interaction throughout the day. Uh, you might find that you, you encounter more creativity or people with a, a very creative bent of mind throughout your week with this energy at play. Jupiter is teachers. Jupiter is uh, philosophers. Jupiter is gurus and inspirational figures. 
Now, because there is a square going on between Uranus, creative individuals, bohemians, that kind of thing, and Jupiter, which is teachers and gurus, there is some tension here. So don't be surprised if some of these creative people or bohemians or some teachers and gurus actually um, not do the dirty on you, but they lead you up the garden path, so to speak. You know, they, they might be misleading you. They might be sort of giving you false information right now. Something isn't quite right in your interactions with these particular types of people. So be wary of people who are new in your life with different attitudes and different beliefs and what have you. And just take everything with a grain of salt this week regarding your interactions with those sorts of people. So any Jupiter square aspect to any planet in the chart is not as bad as say a square from Mars or a square from the Sun or a square from Saturn. But there are still warning signals or warning energies that we need to be conscious of with a Jupiter square. As we know, Jupiter expands whatever it touches in the chart, whatever themes of other planets um, that are touched by Jupiter, they will be blown out to the max. Well, that can lead to overextension in a certain area, trying too hard, taking on too much, thinking you're invincible and you can cope with anything and everything and then coming crashing down later because you've just overextended, as I said. So this is the warning signal with, um, with Jupiter making any square aspect in the chart. And in this chart, Obviously, it's making a square to Uranus, so watch for those feelings of invincibility um, and feelings of, I can take it on and let's go get them. When it comes to freedom and when it comes to humanitarian issues, when it comes to relationships with friends, when it comes to um, progress, all the things ruled by Uranus, watch out for feeling like you can take on more than is actually feasible regarding those themes in the week ahead. And we may see that playing out in the collective where, uh, for example, the desire to break free, the desire to have freedom means that we do like undertake actions that are actually long term detrimental for us because we have this expanded need to break free and the feeling that we can do anything we want to get that freedom. And boom, we end up, you know, with mud on our face. So watch that in the collective as well. We may see that demonstrated in the week ahead. So proceed with caution. I would say with this energy breaking wanting to break free can lead to some erratic behaviors in ourselves as individuals and we might notice ourselves displaying kind of odd behavior where did that come from why am I doing that that's not my usual style and in the collective you know that that desire to break free and pushing the limits over extension regarding um, achieving that also be aware the tendency with um amplified Uranus, as is the case that we're looking at here, is that we can uh, fail to think things through fully. It's like we rush into something before considering the consequences. So again, that energy will be significant in the week ahead. But there are some good things with this too, because Jupiter, he's not the great benefic for nothing. Even a square can bring some positivity. Some people, especially if they've got planets around these sort of six degrees of Taurus and six degrees of Aquarius, people with sort of planets there or, um, you know, uh, big key uh, manifestation points there, they might actually find that they could come into some sort of money. Jupiter is wealth and Uranus is things happening suddenly, out of the blue, unexpectedly. We didn't see it coming. Sudden, out of the blue, prosperity could come your way for some people with this placement. Some people might suddenly find they need to travel. Jupiter is travel. Jupiter is exposure to other cultures and expanding the heart and the mind and the soul through um, taking in everything, exploring everything, and you know, wanting to understand everything. So some people might get the opportunity to travel. Some people might get an unexpected opportunity to immerse themselves in different cultural experiences or different educational experiences that are designed to expand the heart, the soul and the mind. Brilliant. There's also with this combination a quite a beautiful energy of liberated meaning and purpose. And what I mean by that is that we 
find within ourselves what our true meaning is, what our true purpose is, and that liberates us. Now, that's an internal energy, you know, and it might come because it's happening with a square. It might come through a bit of external confrontation or external challenge or difficulty. And we decide I'm not going to put up with that anymore. I'm not going to tolerate that anymore. I want to be free. I want to be liberated. And so something might happen in your life that liberates you, that frees you. It may come because of attention, but it will ultimately bring blessing through that freedom. Now, if you're in a situation where you've been feeling stuck, this energy can break you free. This energy can give you maybe insights, goosebump experiences, answers that come out of nowhere, that come out of the blue, lucky breaks, lucky or, or blessed opportunities to sort of sh um, shatter some shackles that you've been feeling in your life. So for some people, that is going to be one of the manifestations of this energy. So beautiful. And I know there's a lot of people who watch my show who have been feeling the heaviness of 2020 and, and a lot of fear even around what is 2021 therefore going to bring. And I send you my love if that's the way you've been feeling. This this is an energy that can break you out of that pattern, out of that habit of fearful thinking or heaviness. Something might happen in your circumstances, or it could just be, as it, um, the old hermetic principle goes, as within, so without. It could be an inner energetic shift in you that comes because of this that then changes your external life experience and what you are going through in the body. So that's the energy of Jupiter square Saturn that we will encounter in the week ahead, many people will have already been encountering that in the lead up to this uh, square aspect. What else is happening this week? Well, on Wednesday the 20th, and this is a date that many astrologers have been talking about. It is quite a doozy. On Wednesday the 20th, there's a few things happening. Mars is going to come into conjunction here. I'll just do a little line there so you can see what I'm talking about. In a conjunction with Uranus. Okay. Where do we start with this one? Well, firstly, let me say the 20th, for those of you who aren't in America uh, and aren't aware of this, is going to be the inauguration day. So essentially, when uh, Joe Biden is inaugurated, when and if that happens, let's wait and see, um, that when that occurs, we're going to see a brand new chart for the next four years of governance in America created. What is going to be in that astrological chart? this Uranus conjunct with Mars and all the other bits and pieces that are going on on the 20th as well but this is the key and remember the Jupiter square is playing into this all week long it's going to be that tight that it will still be of influence throughout the whole week so Jupiter will be expanding the energy of Mars conjunct Uranus with that square and that's going to be in the inauguration chart for the next four years. So take that as you will. There are positives and negatives to every aspect, conjunction, planet, sign, house. There's good and bad in all and it's up to us as human beings to choose which vibrational level we're going to function at. Whether we're going to be functioning at the lowest vibrational level where things are crap and animosity and fighting and war and sudden upheavals and what have you or we can choose to function at the highest level where we seek the divine wisdom divine knowledge progress put action and energy towards advancement and we work with the energy at the the highest humanitarian level of mars and uranus connecting together it's up to us the next four years is up to us, but it is going to be present for Americans in their chart for the next four years. I don't know why they chose that date. Fate probably played a hand, I have no doubt. But back to what it's going to mean for us personally. I'm not a mundane astrologer. I don't, well, I sometimes make my own predictions about what things might happen in a, on a mundane level, but I don't do that professionally. So um, my role, for those who aren't aware, is to help you and to support you in your journey in a personal way with astrology. So this energy, Mars conjunct Uranus, is often linked to volatility. And the reason that is, like a conjunction is not a bad aspect. It is, um, well, it's not neutral either, but 
it's very reflective of the planets that are involved and Mars can be a bit of a handful let's face it on the, the plus side with Mars Mars gives us courage bravery um, warrior spirit when needed on the negative side with Mars it is the energy of fighting of anger of knee-jerk reactions and we need to be very careful with that Uranus like I've said is a very quick energy and gives sudden changes so you've got the knee-jerk reactions of Mars and the sudden quick responses of Uranus doesn't give you really a lot of you know energy um, or you're not sort of um, channeling the energy of taking your time to think to weigh up the options to consider things when these two get together it's knee-jerk reaction city for yourself personally and in the chart of the um, inauguration collectively as well it's really interesting because Mars and Uranus conjunction often indicates big earth shifts and by that I'm talking about the physical earth volcanoes earthquakes tsunamis things that cause you know tectonic plate movement happen when Mars and Uranus connect so keep an eye out this week for any of that kind of activity around the world we may see something occur um, because of this and it probably will happen in some sort of big scale manner because of this fellow up here making an aspect to the two it's going to be big <laughs> if that occurs so um, yeah there's that's just been noted throughout history so keep an eye on what's going on in the world um, in terms of earth shifts and earth movements but this is the energy of wanting to shake off limiting situations um, of wanting to break free Uranus is that energy it wants liberation it wants truth it wants freedom and Mars is action and let's make it happen and let's get our warrior gear on and go do it you know um, Mars is a bit in its positive manifestation Mars is very like the energy of Wonder Woman which I managed to catch the latest Wonder Woman <laughs> film um, over the the holiday break uh, which was fantastic um, and, and that's the energy of Mars like I am going to be heroic in this situation or you know Captain America or Superman or Spider-Man or something like that it's like I'm a hero I'm a warrior and so we may find that people come in around this state wanting to be the hero wanting to set people free I'm gonna break you free of this thing and now I'm gonna go but remember that there can be a shadow side and a light side this would be fantastic if we had a Wonder Woman come along and sort of fix everything for us equally there can be people who are just aggressive hotheads who come in and they're shooting everybody up you know and then or they're um, you know getting really volatile getting really angry because they want liberation and they want freedom so it's a real seesaw energy this one Mars is a bit of a uh, well some people actually consider Mars to be the most difficult of the malefic planets depends what school of astrology you you choose to align yourself with but that it has been noted you know Saturn you can learn to work with Mars is a bit unpredictable a bit of a wild card bit of a hothead so and, and Uranus has that um, sort of wild card energy as well so expect the unexpected I guess you could say with this let's look at the positive in the positive this combination gives us lots of enthusiasm for our personal lives you know we're we're fired up we're ready to go let's take let's bring it on let's make a difference let's make a change let's set ourselves free in the positive lots of enthusiasm lots of energy comes with this um, we have quick reactivity that can be helpful in certain situations um, you know quick quick thoughts quick responses quick you know we're quick to act where needed and in some circumstances that's necessary we need to have a quick reactivity so um, that can be in the positive in the positive we can have this sort of edgy risk-taking approach where um, you know I, um, I'm, I'm gonna be brave for a worthy cause or I'm gonna step out of my comfort zone to make a change you know and then we sort of take a risk that is brave and courageous fantastic um, and so we, we can have a lot of brave actions occurring because of this energy in our life and I'm talking about your personal life you know maybe you know you you're out at the bar with your friends and you spot the love of your life or something and you brave and you go up and you take a risk and you say hey 
you want to catch up for a coffee with me this week or whatever your pickup line might happen to be. <laughs> I'm not very good at that sort of thing. So you can take brave actions, take a risk under this energy. So it can be very beneficial and positive for you in, in some senses that way. What is the negative with this? Well, it is, like I've kind of already alluded to, a bit of an out of control, volatile energy. We can't predict it. We can't, well, to an extent, like I can say, look, there'll probably be some earth movements and sort of put a bit of money on that. It's probably likely to happen in some way, shape or form to some extent. Can't say where, can't say who it's going to affect, but it's often been noted that that is the case. So there is an element of predictability there, but it's also volatile. Like you don't know who it's going to affect. You don't know how it's going to happen. You know something will happen, but what shape or form it's going to take is a little bit up in the air. That's the energy of, of Mars and Uranus together. Unpredictable, volatile. Similarly, in our personal lives, our risk-taking can go on to the negative side where it's actually dangerous for us you know we um, driving along in our car and um, the lights go to orange and we like screw this i'm gonna get through and you put your foot down take a dangerous risk that's you know quick response like to the light turning orange you burl through and you know you almost skittle someone who's trying to cross the road you know those kinds of dangerous actions that come from taking a risk in your personal everyday circumstances I'm talking about here. Coupled with that, this is also an energy of being downright rude, of being um, offensive even. You know, Mars is, like I've said, hot-headed, reactive, and you have these mental processes because Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury, which is about thinking and the mind. You have these mental thought processes that are reactive and hot-headed. What comes out your mouth? abuse, um, you know, crankiness, rude behavior. It's also wildly erratic behavior as well that we can often see exhibited when this happens too. So be, be on the lookout for that. Um, you should watch for the reactions of the masses in the US in response to the inauguration and just see if there's any observable influences of Mars um, Uranus conjunction in rude erratic behavior from the masses as well so for you know just stay in your cozy living room and turn the tally on and see what it's saying about mars uranus on this day we in the negative with this energy can lose patience we can become frustrated at circumstances in our lives personally at, at things we're experiencing um, we can make mistakes because we don't stop to think. We can have accidents because we don't stop to think or consider things through. That's what happens under this energy. So what's my advice? How are we gonna work with this to get the most out of it? Well, my advice would be where required, lay low, you know. Don't take any risks. Don't slam your foot down on the accelerator to get through that traffic light around this time. Sometimes that, that works and it pays off, but not under this energy, you know. Act with caution. Consider everything that you're doing. And as I said, lay low. You know, if we need to sort of just chillax at home for a couple of days around this time, you know, maybe the, the two or three days before and after, then do so. You know, if that means stocking up on Netflix series that you want to watch and having a cupboard full of, you know, nice snacks and just settling in for a few days, so be it. Let it pass without sort of giving yourself permission to go and be volatile or be rude or erratic or behave wildly. That would be my advice. Take it or leave it. This is an energy that your reactions can surprise even yourself. You can be shocked at what you say or what you do under this energy, particularly because it's amplified by Jupiter. Um, you know, you're, you're going to want to shake up your life. You're going to want to liberate your life in some way that will certainly be there for the majority of us. Be aware that the choices you make will have a big impact and you may end up regretting the decisions that you make. So instead of knee-jerk reactions, my advice with this energy would be consult a dear friend or somebody who you respect. Get some insight from somebody of, who's valuable in your life 
if you're considering making a big decision or a big leap into something, um, really weigh things up with people of wisdom to help, help you make a choice that's based not on a reactive emotion, but based on serious consideration. Now on the 21st, the day after this energy, so it's happening on the 20th, on the 21st, the moon will be joining this trio. So what does that mean? Well, in a very small little nutshell, that means our emotions are going to feel this. We're going to feel this at a gut level, at an emotional level, and we're going to pick up on things psychically in the field. Like the moon is a very psychic type planet, intuitive type planet. And so we might be picking up on energies now in the collective and absorbing those, especially if we're naturally an empath. So be careful if you are inclined that way, you will be picking up on some pretty heavy duty energies out there in, in the world. So other people's feelings of volatility, other people's erraticism, you may be picking up on those things. And the, the moon's uh, energy involved in this might give you um, an amplified emotional response to what is going on. Be conscious, observe it in yourself, you know, uh, act with awareness. And if you see that happening, go, uh huh, that's just the moon with Mars and Uranus right now, squared by Jupiter. I know this is a massive energy, I know it's full on. Breathe. I'm just going to observe and not react. If you can do that, you are going to win with this energy and you will come out on top, empowered by what this brings rather than you know, regretting and feeling discouraged by what's happened. So let's move now to the all signs breakdown. As you can see, it's a big week, a big week. Let's see what it means for us all personally. And we're going to be looking at Taurus in everybody's chart. So let's perhaps start with Taurus. I'll get my little marker here. So for Taurus rising or sun or moon people, well, the energy of Mars, I'll just put my pen down, Mars conjunct with Uranus, square by Jupiter and moon joining it, happening around the 20th and the 22nd, sorry, 20th and 21st, that is happening in your first house, the house of you, your body and its journey through this lifetime, your experiences. You Taurian people, Anyone with Taurus strong in their chart is going to feel a big need to break free. Like they, you're going to want to be liberated. You're going to want to break out of old habits. Now, for Taurus people, Taurus is a bit of a slow, steady, solid energy. It doesn't make decisions rashly. So this desire to break free, to sort of um, burst out, is going to be perhaps a little bit at odds with who you usually are. And you might feel a little bit uncomfortable with that energy. Again, observe it, take note of how you feel, and if you use consideration and um, you know weigh things up, you can make changes under this energy. You can make shifts that will liberate you under this energy. But this is where you're going to you're going to feel a bit sort of um, a bit bit frustrated perhaps by by the energy that's falling in your first house regarding breaking free from something or other that's affecting your life. Something about your body might be frustrating you around this time. You, you might want to break free from, say, a, a, an old health issue that keeps resurfacing. Or you might, um, something about your body might incite some sort of explosive response in you. Like you might um, pull a hamstring and then, you know, just get so angry because now I have, you know, I've got to wear this strapping on my leg for the next couple of weeks and I've got a wedding to go to and I don't want that, that ugly old bandage on my leg, uh, strapping up my torn hamstring when I'm at the wedding and in the wedding photos, you know, this is the kind of thing where our body frustrates us through something that occurs. Now I'm not saying accidents to the body, although Mars and Uranus can instigate accidents but that's only when we act rashly without considering that you know and without working with the energy that that we actually cause accidents and mishaps to our body so if you're acting with consideration and wisdom then you that's less likely to be the case okay so if you're going to go for a jog and your hamstrings aren't used to doing that then warm up beforehand you know consider what you're going to do and um, and work with it that way. So accidents can occur with the body but only in response to you not thinking things through or being rash 
or being erratic in your behavior. Okay, but remember that there's also a lack of patience that comes with this energy, which I described in the intro, uh, and the tendency to behave a bit rudely. But who are we be behaving rudely to? Who are we lacking patience for? Ourself with this energy. So you might be really impatient with your inability to learn a new skill or you know, your body's inability to do something that you ordinarily would like to do. Um, you might be very you know, be a bit rude to yourself under this energy. Watch your thought patterns, watch your thinking about yourself. You know, you, you could very easily under this energy be very rude to yourself. Oh, you stupid idiot. Why do you never, you know, um, do X, Y, or Z? You know, that sort of self-talk that's very detrimental and rude. If you observe that happening in you, know where it's coming from and just see it as a thought and not the truth. In the positive though, Taurus, rising sun or moon people, you will be feeling very brave right now. You'll be feeling very courageous. Oh, goodness me. Sorry about that. We've gone for a walk. Um, you'll be feeling very brave and very courageous about your life, about making changes to your life, about um, getting out of a rut, stirring up and taking action that will invigorate your life and lead to more truth and liberation for you. So you'll be feeling courageous, you'll be feeling brave. You can be a bit of a Wonder Woman regarding, or, or a Wonder Man if you like, <laughs> I'm not going to be sexist there, um, about the choices that you make in life. Just make sure that you weigh things up and consider them deeply before you go in courageously so that you avoid those accidents that I was talking about. So you might decide that you want to do something really brave regarding your body. And this is your the house of self-image as well. You might get really courageous and say, you know what? I am sick of dealing with my hair going gray. I'm going to shave it all off and donate the money I raised to cancer or whatever, you know, that <clears throat> Shave for a Cure program. You might decide you're going to do that and just stop dyeing your hair and just go grey. That's a brave thing to do regarding your self-image and how you present to the world. That could be what this energy incites in you, the desire to be courageous and brave about something to do with your body and your self-image and how you present to the world. And that can be a good thing. So that's what I'm seeing for Taurus rising, sun or moon under this energy, how it could affect you personally. If you are Gemini rising, sun or moon, well, the energy of Mars conjunct Uranus with the moon and square by Jupiter, oh my goodness, um, is occurring for you in the 12th house of the horoscope. So this is where on the 20th and the 21st, you're going to most feel this energy. You might even feel it in the few days before and the few days after as well. It's in the 12th house that you're going to want to break free from something, to liberate yourself from something. And what's the 12th house? Past lives, karma, baggage that you carry that is affecting this incarnation from the past. Gemini rising people, can I suggest getting a past life regression would be a good thing to do or to consider doing in this week ahead because you're going to want to break free from past emotional bondages. On that topic and you know go to whoever you feel comfortable doing so you know getting a regression with but on that topic, Robin, who works with me at my channel Guiding Star, um, if you go to my website www.guidingstarastrology.com, Robin uh, is my past life regressionist who works with me and she's having a special at the moment. She is offering, just up until the end of January, heavily discounted um, three hour sessions on regression work. Um, and doing a regression with you. So check that out if you're Gemini rising and you feel like there's a karmic loop that you're involved in or a karmic bond that you are feeling weighted down by um, and set yourself free. Liberate yourself under this particular energy because the energies are supporting you to do so. You're going to want to do that and you're going to be looking to do that. Coupled with that, this Mars conjunct Uranus energy is an energy in its positive sense of bravery, of being courageous. And let me tell you, it takes some courage to do a past life regression because you see things and confront things in your psyche, in yourself, that are not what you expect. But God, it's liberating. I just, I cannot emphasize it 
enough the power of doing so, of setting yourself free from your past life wounds and traumas. So be courageous, Gemini rising sun, moon people. Be bold. Have a crack. See what it's all about. Discover, um, you know, whether this is going to liberate you or free you by dipping your toe, trying it out. Um, that is, it's a powerful time for that for you guys. Now, not only that, but this is an energy um, in the 12th house that has to do with spirituality. And you might find that you want to break free from spiritual bondage. And by that, I mean, past lives aside, you might be feeling spiritually bonded to like an, an, an entity that has attached itself to you or some kind of um, unwelcome presence that's not from the light that seems to be weighing you down or heavy on your spirit or something. You might desire to break free from those kinds of unseen things. The 12th house is a, a house of hidden energies. That could be a thing. And it could be, could be that this particular energy of Mars and Uranus conjunction incites some an explosive response to you because you're feeling trapped by this particular entity or energy or weightedness that is present in your life. So expect that there could be an explosive response within you to that and a desire to sort of break free of that. In the lighter sense, it could be that you're experiencing a creative block, which is a 12th, 12th house is creativity. Maybe you've been having writer's block or artist block or something. This energy could shake you out of that rut and break you free from that, but it'll probably happen in a very explosive manner. You might suddenly decide, oh, where are all my canvases? I've got to just, you know, I want to do 80 paintings this week. <laughs> you know, it could be just that powerful for you to break out of the blockage. So the house of creativity, this could incite a breaking free in that regard. Um, it's also a house of healing and it is highly likely under this energy that you will want to break free from any wounds that or, or any um, inhibitions that have kept you from being healed at a psychic or psychological, I should say rather, level or even a physical level. So this is a house of doctors, medicines, um, that sort of thing. So you might find that you want to break free from any health complications by going and seeing a doctor, by going and visiting the chiropractor, by going and getting acupuncture or something like that. And that could liberate you and set you free as well. In fact, Mars rules um, these sharp objects like needles. You could find complete healing through going and getting acupuncture under this energy. Be aware there will be a lack of patience in the 12th house realm for you guys. You might even find that you behave a bit rudely um, regarding 12th house things. So that might mean that you lack patience for um, the process of dealing with past life karma or that you, you lack patience with um, the healing process that your body is trying to go through or the creative process. But keep in mind that this, you can tap into the higher manifestation of this energy, which is that energy of bravery and courage. If you do that, if you confront any um, you know, fears about regression work or you know, dealing with a, like a going to a, a Reiki practitioner or um, visiting somebody who can alleviate those sort of um, attachment energies from the spiritual realms, um, you know, like a shaman. I also have um, Tessa, wonderful shaman, working on my site. If you want to check her out as well, um, she deals with that sort of thing. She gets rid of those heavy weighted energies. So check that out um, and be brave, be courageous about dealing with those things. You could find that liberation comes through taking action right now, but just be aware you'll be impatient with it. You'll be like, come on, I just want to be free. Enough is enough. Um, and you know, that, that can cause some frustration too. That comes with this energy as well. All right. Cancer rising, sun or moon energy. Or if you have a stellium as well, you can consider that too. Well, the energy of the um, conjunction of Mars and Uranus, and the moon with a square to Jupiter, is occurring for you in your 11th house. And this is where you're going to feel a real need to break free. For cancer people, they're going to really want to break free, perhaps, of collective restriction, of collective 
um, you know, uh, obligation even. Like this is the house, the 11th house is the house of the collective, of large networks. And maybe you've been involved in a network of people or a large group of something and you've like had a gut full and you're just like, I want to get out of this situation, not, not happy here anymore. So cancer people can be feeling that rather deeply. Might be a, an unhealthy toxic friendship you want to break free of. That can be a thing with the, this energy in the 11th house as well. Maybe you want, you, you've had a, a dream or a goal in your life, but it's actually become a burden and it's actually lost its joy. It's lost its heart-centered approach and you're like, I want to break free of this dream and goal. I've had enough. So that can also manifest with this particular energy. But know that these experiences, if that's the way you're feeling, the desire to break free in those realms, can also incite a very explosive response in you. Breaking free from that toxic friendship might, you know, you might explode. You know, you're out for coffee with this friend. She's always putting you down. She's always criticizing or maybe she's always whinging about something and you just lose it. You're like, I've had enough of your shit and that's it. Our friendship's over and it, you end it with a very sort of volcanic response. Not ideal. But know that that is one of the ways this can manifest under this energy. So be very careful about, you know, losing friendships from erratic, wild, volcanic response behavior under this particular energy. So be conscious of that. Um, also, that can uh, affect you in large groups as well, where you just respond explosively to a situation in a group context or in some sort of network situation or uh, maybe in, you know, response to sort of, I don't know, some inspirational figure or something and you respond in a very negative, rude way because this energy of Mars, Uranus can be very rude as well. Um, it can be very uh, impatient. And so your tolerance levels are lowered for, you know, with friends and groups and circles of influence and so on. Tolerance levels are at a low point with this. Patience levels are at a low point. And if we don't stop and weigh up and consider how we're feeling, we can react and then regret it later. So be very aware of that being a possibility. And if you're conscious and observing how you're behaving and how you're thinking, then you have great power over that. If you're just reactive, then you, you have to live with the consequences, don't you? The one th good thing about this particular influence though is it gives a feeling of, of bravery and courage. And if you need to address a toxic relationship and be brave about ending that, that group association or that toxic connection, then you're going to have what it takes. This is an energy that can give you that sort of heroic spirit that says, I'm not going to tolerate that anymore. And you decide to send the text or, um, you know, speak the words that end a toxic connection. So in that sense, it can be good if, you, if you're observing, if you're conscious, if you're considering and weighing up things with a level head, not reactive, but with a level head, you have will be channeling the higher energy of this combination that gives you the courage to put an end to things that are not serving you if, if needed. So Cancer to Leo, Leo rising sun or moon people. Cool, yeah, it's not going to stay there. We're all a bit temperamental these days on my wheel. We don't like to sit where we're told. <laughs> so be it. Um, maybe that's a bit of Uranus Mars too. Don't like to go with the status quo. But Leo energy, if you're Leo rising sun and moon, then the energy of moon, Uranus and Mars connecting is falling in the 10th house. So it's in this realm that you're going to feel a big need to break free. Maybe break free from the influence of a boss or a team leader or something like that who's driving you bonkers. Or maybe the need to break free from a, an old career circumstance that you're sick of, that you've had enough of, that needs a change, that needs a shift. So you decide you're going to take action. Now this is where you've got to be cautious because actions under this energy can be very explosive and volcanic and responsive in the negative. So the more consciousness you can bring to dealing with this circumstance, Leo people, the, the, the more you'll get out of this. If you are aware and observing your thoughts and reactions and, and, and not you know, doing the knee-jerk reaction thing and, and considering weighing things up before you speak, before you act, then you'll get more out of this energy and you can make wise choices. 
if you're knee-jerk reacting to something the boss says or some something that an authority figure does, and that doesn't have to be a boss, it could be like the government, something the government does, it could be something that the, um, I don't know, maybe a, a policeman pulls you over on the way home from work or something like that, there's an authority figure right there that you're having to deal with, some sort of rules and regulations that are driving you a bit up the wall, you know, your knee-jerk responses to those circumstances in life could be detrimental in the long run. So the more consciousness you can bring to how you're dealing with things and awareness, the better you're going to be able to cope with this energy. But it is an energy, yeah, I also, sorry, need to say that it is an energy that can is, is notably observed to cause people to behave rudely and erratically and wildly in ways they wouldn't usually do. So with your boss, again, consciousness is key. With authority figures, don't you know be wild or erratic or knee-jerk response because it's likely you'll say something rude. It's likely that you'll do something offensive even, and it could be to your downfall or your detriment. So knowledge is power. Take that one on board. The good thing about this energy, though, the one thing that we can embrace positively with this energy is that it gives us bravery and confidence. Um, the ability to be a hero, to be a warrior. So in that, with that in mind, you might need to sort of be heroic or put brave actions in place regarding interactions with an authority figure like the government or a boss or a policeman on the way home. Um, you might need to act bravely with regard to a career choice or, or um, how you hope to achieve in the world. So maybe that means bravely deciding you're going to send your um, sample album to a certain executive producer and you're brave and you have a crack and dip your toe there. Maybe you bravely decide you're going to approach your boss for a raise. Um, maybe you bravely and courageously decide under this energy that you're going to approach that town planning department with its rules and its regulations and try and you know, uh, put your case before them that you deserve to be able to build that shed in your backyard or something. Um, dealing with rules and regulations from governmental authorities, you can be very brave and courageous about um, and take, take steps forward, provided, as I said, it's not a knee-jerk reaction, that you're using awareness and consciousness and that you've weighed things up thoroughly. Um, you can use that bravery to get you places, to bring sudden events unexpected Uranus that are a surprise to you, a blessing to you. So try and work with the energy in that way if you're Leo rising, sun or moon, and you'll come off a lot better than just giving in to your volatility. Virgo rising or sun or moon people, well this energy is falling for you in the ninth house and this is where we're seeing on the 20th the Mars, Uranus, and on the 21st, the moon will join this trio squared by Jupiter down here. It's a biggie. So the 20th and the 21st, keep an eye on those dates. This is in the ninth house realm where you're going to be wanting to break free. Maybe you want to break free from some old thought pattern, some old way of thinking, some old belief system that you just can't stand anymore. You've had it all your life up to here and you're just out of there now. With a belief system, with a religious practice, with a, a, some sort of philosophical viewpoint or um, attitude. Maybe you've been going to university and you decide you want to break free out of the course that you're doing because it's just not your bag anymore. Maybe you decide you want to break free from the, the restrictions in the, the place where you are and you want to go and experience greater culture or more um, more uh, expanded insights and you're sick of being so small in life and life being so contained and you want to expand and grow and break free from your limitations. This is a very strong energy for doing that but I have to warn you Virgo people, this is an energy of great explosiveness. <laughs> where you're going to want to break free, but you might do so in a very knee-jerk reaction way, in an explosive way. Let's say, you know, you, you've been, your family's part of a religious community or what have you, and you don't want to be part of that religious community anymore. Instead of just quietly going your own way and doing your own thing, you leave with great bluster and great accusations at everybody, and you believe this, and it's rubbish, and, you know, that kind of carry-on, and it serves you very detrimentally in the long run. 
So if you're looking to break free from any of those circumstances I described, act with consciousness and awareness. Because the more you can observe your thought processes, you can observe your feelings, and then take action based on your observation of how you're feeling um, with awareness, then the, the greater benefit can come out of this. If you just feel your feeling and then react to it, that's when the detriment can come with Mars, con Mars conjunct Uranus. So consciousness is key to getting the most out of this energy in a beneficial way. That said, it's also Mars with Uranus is also a combination for being rude and erratic and behaving wildly. So, you know, you might find some sort of teacher or inspirational figure, which is a ninth house things, says something and you just are rude. You, you know, you're in a lecture at uni, the lecturer says something or maybe some inspirational figure you follow on YouTube says something and you're like, oh, bullshit and get on the keyboard, keyboard warrior with your rude accusations. Or maybe you stand up in the lecture hall and go, screw you, that's, and you know, and you're just rude. That's obviously not going to serve you very well in the long run. You might incite a tirade on YouTube comments from people who are like, how dare you, blah, blah, blah. Or you might get a, you know, kicked out of uni or something for your behavior. <laughs> so crazy examples there, but um, entirely possible under this energy. We respond explosively, rudely, um, with lack of patience, lack of consideration, and we suffer the consequences. Be forewarned and forearmed about that. Also, the good side. Because everything has a shadow side and everything has a positive side. And in the positive with this energy, you can be brave and courageous. Maybe someone in a lecture hall or online says something and you disagree with it. But instead of exploding like a volcanic, volcanic eruption, you actually go home, you think about it, you pen your words or you, you write an email or something like that, um, putting your point of view forward in a very diplomatic, respectful way, but it takes some courage. It takes some bravery to do that because, hey, you're standing up to an inspirational figure in your life. You are laying something on the table before someone who is your teacher, your guide, your mentor, your guru. Well, it might take some bravery, but you have what it takes under this energy to, to enact that courage. In consciousness, I will add. The other thing, uh, the other ninth house themes here are having bravery and courage regarding cultural experiences, regarding expanding your mind, because that's what the ninth house is all about. It's it's not staying small, it's getting big. It's ruled by Jupiter, the ninth house. It has connections to Jupiter. So it's about removing whatever is keeping you small out of your life, whether that's a lack of cultural awareness, whether it's a lack of education, whether it's not having mentors, you know, you remove those things out of your life. You get mentors, you get cultural exposure and cultural experience you get higher learning and suddenly your life and your beliefs and your mindset they just expand that's what the ninth house is all about and you can be very courageous about expanding your heart and soul and mind right now you know you decide okay when covid's done i'm going to trek up the himalayas and i've never been out of my own country before but by golly i'm going to go do that and you get brave and courageous about doing some form of travel that's going to totally expand your horizons, literally and figuratively. Um, or you decide, I'm going to get courageous. I, I've, I've been very scared about doing a university course. You know, I'm 40 years of age and I never went to uni and it's a really scary thing to do, but I'm going to do it. Courage and away you go. So you can use this energy to empower you to grow most exponentially in this house. So use that for good and avoid the knee-jerk reactions you have only to benefit from doing so. All right, Virgo to Libra rising, sun or moon people. Okay, well, for you guys, this energy is falling for you in the 8th house. This is, this is on the 20th of um, January uh, when we're having Mars conjunct Uranus and squaring Jupiter. At the same time, on the 21st, the moon will join in. So it's quite an intense energy in the eighth house for you, the house of um, Taurus. So this is where you're going to feel a big need to break free. 
Now, maybe you have been feeling in some kind of like life has been heavy. You've been in a crisis. You've been in the underworld. The underworld experiences are eight house experiences, you know, where um, you, you've, you've felt disadvantaged or you, life has been dark. You know, you've been going through a dark night of the soul or something. And under this energy this week, you might not reach breaking point. That's not what I'm saying. But you might be like, universe, I've had a gut full can't take this anymore. I want to break free from this crisis situation. I want to break free from this upheaval situation or this dark situation that I'm in and you desire change. Fortunately, this is also the house of change. So for Libra rising sun or moon people, you may find this week could be a week that brings massive change and turns life around for you 180 degrees. Because Uranus desires, desires to liberate you, and here he is in your eighth house. Mars wants you to take action and be brave and courageous about liberating you when he's with your, um, Uranus. And the moon is going to give you the emotional motivation, like the emotional feeling of, I really want this, I really need this, to do so. So it could be very powerful for you guys, but I do have to warn you, when you have Uranus and Mars together, it is an energy of explosive reactivity. It's an energy at its lowest level of, of rudeness, of lack of patience. So you might be, you might have had it up to here with the crisis situation or difficulty that you're dealing with in your life and lack of patience for pushing through and wading through the waters, so to speak. Um, that just goes out the window, any patience regarding that now. You might find that you have a... Um, uh, an explosive response that gets you even deeper into the shit with this energy. You know, you, you let's say you're in a, a difficult life situation and let's say you go, you go, you have to, you're in a crisis situation and you have to go to the ER department at the hospital, but you have a complete lack of patience for what's going on at the ER because they're inundated and, you know, it's all, all going crazy there and you're sick and you want, you're in this crisis situation with your health or whatever it happens to be and you're at the emergency department and you just have no patience anymore and you let them have it. Explosive, reactive, rude. That's the energy of Mars Uranus in a crisis situation. It's not going to serve you well. You'll probably be really regretful of that later. You'll go, what was I thinking? You know, why did I behave that way? I'm so embarrassed by my behavior. That can be a response to this energy. And that can be one of the ways this energy can display. You might also lose patience and be rude with people who are in um, esoteric circles like shaman, past life regressionists, um, you know, energy healers, Reiki healers, acupuncturists, astrologers. You might be just, you know, really impatient with them, really rude with them. Uh, if you are a uh, Libra rising sun or moon, it's not common for Libra people to be rude. But this energy is an energy of volatility and reactivity in its lowest energy. You might also be very reactive about a will, you know. You might find out what grandma left you in her will and you're like, oh, I don't want that and uh, you have a big explosion, you know. Um, receiving from, from other people is an, an eighth house thing and that could incite some sort of reactivity in you, you know. Um, when you don't receive what you think you should or when, you know, you... you um, uh, you aren't getting like the opportunities that you think you should be getting from other people. Uh, so yeah, watch for that as well. Because the key to handling this energy well is consciousness, awareness, observing you and your thoughts and feelings and, and your, you know, your reactions to things. So the more you can be in a state of consciousness, the more you can handle this with the positive side, which is to be courageous. Maybe you're at the hospital and you've got a broken leg or something like that in the ER department and they're going, they're just so busy, they're going crazy at this time, which is, would highly be likely actually under this energy. Um, and, and you haven't got much patience because of this Mars conjunct Uranus, but you decide I'm going to be courageous and I'm, I'm not going to go up and blast their head off, 
but I'm going to be courageous about going up to that nurse at the counter and saying, look, I'm in pain here. I'm in agony. Please, can we do something? And, um, you know, instead of some people are just meek and they will just sit there in agony and pain um, while everything's going on around them. Maybe you need to incite some courage to take action, to get out of a crisis situation, to get out of a hurtful situation, to get out of a, a difficult situation. Now, I've given you a, the illustration of a, an ER center. But maybe you're at, um, maybe you're in some other sort of crisis circumstance. This is the house of crisis, but it's also the house of liberation from crisis and rebirth out of the darkness. So maybe you need to get courageous about breaking the chains on your life. Maybe you need to get courageous about leaving a shitty marriage. It's house of divorce, this one. Maybe you need to get courageous about, um, breaking some sort of other other chains in life like okay I'm going to go and have that operation that I need even though I'm afraid of operations god damn it I'm going to be courageous about this and you make that decision maybe you need to be uh, courageous about um, breaking free from some other like circumstance that's been a weight on you a heaviness on you and and, and depleting your life maybe living in a certain area that really isn't your your people um, you need to break free from that because it's bringing you down so all of these examples you know where in life are you feeling like life is heavy and um, the, like you're in the dark night of the soul? That's where you can use your courage and your, well, your enthusiasm, but also your heroic nature to break free. But using conscious awareness, the more that you're using reactivity, the more it's going to go to the juice. If you're aware, if you're acting with, you know, rational objectivity, then you can actually really break free with courage here. So that's uh, Libra rising, sun or moon people. For Scorpio rising, sun or moon people, well, this energy is falling in your seventh house. So the seventh house is where you're going to be feeling like you want to break free from something. And what's the seventh house all about? Contracts, negotiations. The seventh house is all about relationships partnerships collaborations and so you might be in a partnership that you just had a gut full of whether that's a marriage whether that's a you know a, a business partnership whether it's a, a contract that you have been under and you're going to have this strong desire to break free from those things now under this energy just be warned though that's fine to have this energy of desiring to break free from those things but there's two ways you can go you can go the, the shadow side of this energy or you can go the light side. Now, the shadow side of this energy of wanting to break free might see you having knee-jerk reactions. You've had enough of your marriage and you want to break free, for example, so you let loose at your partner and you tell them what you think and you're, I'm going to drag you through court and I'm going to... Explosive, rude, reactive, responsive in a negative sense. You might do that with a business partner. You might ring up... I don't know, the bank or someone else you've got a contract with and rip through them because if this stupid contract and you're taking all my money and I'm getting out of this and and rude. Rudeness is the energy of Mars conjunct Uranus. So be aware that that's the shadow side. How do we deal with this best? We bring in some consciousness, Scorpio people. Um, and you're very good at this. We observe. We, we look at our feelings we look at our thoughts and we consider them we don't engage with them and go all hot-headed and reactive we actually act with consciousness we think and so when we do that then we channel the light side the the positive side of Mars Uranus which is to be brave which is to take cre um, courageous action to make changes maybe you've got um, a, a troublesome marriage or a business partnership that's about to fold and you need to do something really courageous. Maybe, you know, you evaluate, you think, you observe and you're like, you know, I don't want my marriage to end. Um, I'm going to be courageous and go to my partner and I'm going to say, you know, maybe we need to have some time apart to think and to find out who we really are individually and then I'd like to try again. Or maybe we need to go to counselling and, you know, take some courage to approach your partner and say, I think our relationship's rubbish and we need counselling. That might take some courage, depending on your circumstances, to do that. 
maybe you do need to leave and it's going to take courage to do that but maybe your response is more considered more thoughtful more like you know i'm you say to your partner i'm not I'm not feeling this anymore i'm I, I i think it's run its course i think we need to go our separate ways and you're actually more more compassionate more gentle um and uh, in your braveness about ending a relationship so that's an example same for business partnerships you you actually act with consciousness rather than reactivity and it takes courage to approach someone that way it takes courage to um, ring up the bank and say look I'm not coping with my repayments on this particular contract that we've got what can we do about this how can we manage this you know it, it can take courage you know when we have to deal with our, our pride about those sorts of things so just a few examples there but you might need to well the best way to use this energy is to be courageous about your relationships to be courageous about your partnerships to be courageous about any contractual obligations that you have and of course, in doing so, then you really channel the positivity of the seventh house too, which is about harmony, peacemaking and keeping balance. So keep that in mind, act with consciousness, you'll get so much more out of this week's energy than you would by just reacting to everything you feel and everything you think. Okay, Sagittarius, rising sun or moon people. Well, for you, this energy is falling in over here I'm sorry down here in the fifth house and this is where on the 20th of January we're going to be having a conjunction of Uranus and Mars and then on the 21st we're going to be having the moon joining these couple plus it's all squared by Jupiter so woof, look out it's a big week but for you it's in the fifth sorry the sixth house not the fifth house I do apologize so this means that this is an area where you're going to want to break free from something, maybe break free from a work situation, maybe break free from your fellow workmates and you've had enough of having to deal with them and sit with them at the tea room every lunchtime and you know, oh, get me out of here kind of thing. You're going to have this desire to break free from those circumstances. Maybe it might be in a health related field, you know, you, you are feeling you know sickly worn out tired or something and you're like oh I just want to break free from this I'm tired of feeling tired or I'm tired of not having a routine that works for me or I'm tired of my exercise habits that are you know are not working and you want to break free from a diet from an exercise from you know your subordinates if you're an employer you're sick of who, you, who you've employed and you just want to, you've had enough. That can be the case too. You want to break free from a situation of debt or poverty. You want to break free from a situation of, of conflict. All of those things can come up for um, for Sagittarius rising people in this with this energy in the, sorry, get my words out, in the sixth house. Now, that's good to want to break free from limiting situations and that's part of this energy terrific how we deal with it though is very important because we can either go to the shadow side or we can go to the light side the shadow side of this is the knee-jerk reaction so you you um you know you have a a, a, a run-in with an employee that you have and you're like that's it you're fired and you just react to a situation rather than thinking it through, rather than weighing things up. Maybe you have a, um, a situation where you react to some health issue that you've got in a reactive way, in an explosive way. Um, I you know, have observed people who are having troubles with you know, maybe it's mental health or physical health and they actually physically beat up on themselves when they are frustrated by their body and its limitations or their mind and its limitations. Um, not good, not good and that's a reactive response to a physical health issue or something like that. Um, the other ways it might manifest is that you might get explosive in court. This is where we are in conflict situations. So um, you might find you're in a court case or dealing with some sort of confrontational circumstance, maybe dealing with a, an issue of poverty, having to sort things out with the bank or something, and you lose it. You just react and you, you explode like a volcano. You you start shouting, you start abusing, you start being rude. This is then an energy of rudeness and lack of patience. And you just lose your shit. 
that's obviously the shadow side and, it, and obviously it's not going to bring you the best result with this energy. So be very careful of hot-headed reactivity to situations where that are um, imbalanced because in a nutshell, the sixth house is the energy of imbalance and the seventh house is the energy of harmonizing. So poverty, sickness, um, abuse and conflict, those sorts of things are seen from the sixth house. And it's also where we take action and put it put systems in place to rectify those things. So if you find that you're having a hot-headed response to any of imbalanced situations in your life, I want to encourage you, aim for the light side of this energy. And by that, I mean weighing up, acting with consciousness. To live with consciousness gives you a, a you know just a, a greater capacity to enjoy life. Quite frankly, um, yes, it's fun to be spontaneous, but not when there's a hot-headed response. <laughs> so in this case, what would it look like? Well, it would mean if you're the boss having a run-in with your employee, um, because this is the house of subordinates, you would walk away, take time to cool down before you fire that person. You you may still fire them. But you would do it without the hot-headed response. You would consider and weigh up, okay, well, how is my company going to run when this person isn't there? How easy is it going to be to get somebody else to come in? You look at your emotions. You look at your thought patterns. You consider why and how you're feeling that way. And then you make your choices. And then you make your decisions, not just knee-jerk reaction. That's acting with consciousness. Maybe you're in court and instead of just going off the handle about something, you actually step back, take a breath, gather your thoughts, gather your feelings, observe who you're being in this moment, and then make your statement. You know, you don't react, you don't knee jerk it, you know. So the more you can bring consciousness into your choices, the better off you're going to be. And that takes courage, that takes bravery. And, and certainly this is in the positive an energy of courage and bravery, Uranus conjunct Mars. So you can bring positive courage and bravery to a circumstance of, of debt or poverty or lack or uh, abuse or conflict or divorce. Or you can bring an energy of courage and bravery to, to a situation in the workplace. Or you can bring an energy of courage and bravery to how you're dealing with your body and its health and its functionality. So maybe it takes courage to say, that's it, I'm changing my diet. And I don't care what the rest of my family are doing, I am going vegan or whatever it happens to be. Um, maybe it takes courage for you to, to actually go to a gym for the first time ever. I know it took courage for me to do that the first time I did it because I always imagined that it was the, the sphere of the big bulked up muscle bodybuilder type people who I found intimidating. Um, so it took some courage for me to see that I could be there and it would, would benefit me. I don't regret doing that. Um, so maybe there's there's some hurdle that needs to be overcome that you can in in the sixth house realms that you can apply courage and bravery to that could actually really bless and change your life. So I hope that helps for Sagittarius rising sun or moon people to navigate this energy this week. For Capricorn rising sun or moon people, well. The energy of Uranus conjunct Mars, which is quite a heavy duty energy, is falling in your fifth house. That's on the 20th. On the 21st, you've got the moon joining those guys, making a trio that's squared by Jupiter. Look out. That's quite an intense energy. What does it mean? Well, it means you're going to want to break free from something in your fifth house realm. So that might mean breaking free from... Well, fifth house is the house of children. Fifth house is the house of lovers. Fifth house is the house of hobbies and creativity, um, a creative expression of self. And so you might have had, you know, a creative block. This is a house to do with writing or one of two houses, I should say, to do with writing. And you might want to, you might have had create writer's block, you know, you aren't producing the work that you usually would or doing the blog that you usually would, or maybe there's been a block regarding your hobbies, you know, um, I myself, I love to sew, but I haven't had time for about a year now and I really miss it. Um, I wish I had time and space to spend on my sewing, my hobby. 
Um, and so there's a block there. Well, under this energy, you might want to break out of that block. You might feel like, you know what? I need to get my sewing machine out. Or you might think, um, you know, okay, suddenly I feel like I need to break free from this writer's block. I'm going to sit down and you just write for eight hours straight or something. So there is this, this desire to break free from blockages to creative expression, blockages to hobbies, blockages to love. You know, maybe you, you're um, in a relationship with somebody, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend kind of relationship and the, the love is lacking. And you're like, you know what? I'm in this relationship, but there's no love here. I want to break free from that. Maybe you, you've uh, got a situation with your children and it's whatever circumstance it happens to be, you want to break free from that. Maybe your children have been taking advantage of you and exploiting, you know, uh, your kindness or your generosity and you're like, got to break free from the way they're treating me or something like that. So you can see there's a number of different realms of life where you might feel the need to break free from something this week. Now the key, guys, is how you're going to do so. This energy is very volatile and it's going to be expanded by that square from Jupiter as well. So you may, there's two ways you can go. There's a shadow on a light side. It's going to be hard to take the light side, but that's obviously the, the more preferable one that's going to give you better positive results. The shadow side of this energy is explosive reactivity. It's knee-jerk reactions. The shadow side of this energy is um, rudeness lack of patience so instead of saying to your kids hey guys I, you know you, you, you've got to stop taking me for granted you know I'm not going to just be your slave and clean up after you you've got to take some responsibility instead of being rational about it you lose your shit and you're yelling and you're screaming and you're throwing things across the room and the kids are like oh my god what's good into mum you know or dad or whoever so that's an example um, of reactivity that's not appropriate but it's highly likely under this energy you might get reactive to uh, a boyfriend or a girlfriend you never tell me that you love me and and I'm the one doing all the work in this relationship and boom a volcanic explosion in the relationship um, you might instead of breaking free in a healthy way um, you might find if, if, if you're single and you're sick of being single and you want love in your life and you go on a big rant about, oh, there's no good men in the world or women always treat me like this and meh. And, you know, you jump online and have a big rant or whatever. Or maybe, you, you know, um, I don't know, in, in hobbies or your creative expression, you get frustrated because of the blocks that have been there and you end up throwing your sewing machine across the room and it breaks. You know, sewing machines uh, are ruled by Mars <laughs> and accidents happen when Mars and Uranus can jump. So, you know, you're so frustrated by the blocks that have been happening to you being able to pursue hobbies or creative self-expression and you just eh, lose your shit and do something explosive and reactive and there's an accident waiting to happen. Silly example, but yeah. That's the shadow side. The light side of this for you guys might be that you act more with consciousness and that's what we want to strive for that's what we want what we want to try to achieve to observe our feelings because it's going to be a very emotional week to observe our feelings to observe our thoughts to weigh up and consider okay i'm feeling frustrated and blocked and i want to break free from the restrictions around my ability to do my hobbies you know what instead of getting frustrated at this i'm going to set aside half an hour an evening to sit down and do my calligraphy work, whatever your hobby happens to be. And you actually take action based on rational thought and conscious awareness, not reactivity. Or maybe you sit down with your boyfriend and girlfriend and go, look, I don't want to be reactive here. I've been thinking a lot about this, but I think we need to work on the, the, the romance in our relationship and the love in our relationship because I'm just not feeling it. What can we do together? You know, so you, you act with awareness and consideration and consciousness rather than reactivity. With your children, as I said before, you think about how you are, you know, inciting their support and their help, you know, or, and you act in a way that's appropriate to that. So you get the picture. Acting with consciousness and awareness is key to manifesting the higher level of this energy. And the higher level of this energy is actually courage 
and bravery. For some people, it might take courage to sit down with that boyfriend and girlfriend and have a heart to heart about the status of their relationship. For some people, it might take courage and bravery to instigate a new plan with your children that says, hey, we're all going to pull our weight in this family here now. For some people, it might take courage to even like connect with your children if you know they're estranged or whatever um but you, you you jump in and you take a courageous action that's actually the higher manifestation of mars uranus energy some people who are single and wanting love in their life this is the house of dating and romance might need to act with courage and get on one of those dating apps or go out and try and meet people or host a dinner party where everyone comes along and they bring a friend and you get a chance to meet other people you know Acting courageously is required here to actually have progress in life, to move forward. So tune into that and go for it. All right, Aquarius, rising sun or moon people. Well, this energy is falling for you in your fourth house. This is where we are having Uranus conjunct Mars, and that's happening on the 20th. Of, uh, of January and then on the 21st we've got the moon joining this couple and it's all being squared by Jupiter full-on energy this week what can we expect well this is an energy of wanting to break free feeling really deeply that you just want to get out of a certain situation or a certain circumstance that you've had enough and this is in the fourth house so maybe you want to break free from your current domestic situation or you want to break free from a family situation or you want to break free from where you're living the home that you have or break free from you know maybe you you're in a flat and you're just sick of being in a flat you want to have a house with a garden so you can grow your own veggies and you want to break free from that circumstance so place of living it can be an energy of wanting to break free as well so maybe it's a community thing the fourth house has to do with our community and where we feel a sense of belonging you might want to break free from a community that you've been a part of and under this energy it's very much stirred up in us the thing is that's fine to want to break free and maybe we need to but how are you going to do it there are two ways under this energy and the more common one is reactivity hot-headedness explosiveness rudeness impatience so we're sick of a family dynamic that we've been experiencing with mum or dad and we react and we you know shoot them a you know wordy email that really lays it on the line with them or maybe we um you know at a family gathering it's the house of family and our heritage our roots our lineage we start telling everyone you you do this to me and i'm sick of the way you do that and we really let them all have it um, obviously hot-headed explosive responsive doesn't do any good for family relationship dynamics um, maybe you know we start getting frustrated at our home environment and you know we're sick of living in that apartment when we want a house with a garden and we're just so frustrated one day we pick up a vase and throw it through the window and you know, then we've got to pay for a broken window so um, domestic family community issues of wanting to break free be very careful of hot-headedness and reactivity that cause problems accidents and detriment the best way to handle this desire to break free and it's the less likely one under this energy but i want to encourage you to go for that higher vibration if you can is to act with consciousness to be aware to observe how you're feeling because it's perfectly legitimate to want to break free to observe how you're thinking why you're thinking what you're thinking and why you're feeling what you're feeling and then take considered action you know maybe everyone in your family has pissed you off so maybe instead of just having a big rant maybe you need to write each person a letter and say look you really hurt me when you did xyz and that's sort of trying to lay those old demons that are wanting you to rest so to speak that that's a legitimate conscious approach you know considered not hot-headed not reactive so that is the the higher vibration here of this energy because this energy at its highest vibration is courage and it takes courage to lay it on the line to share our feelings to bring our feelings out in the open and be honest with our people who are very intimate in our lives and if you you know channeling the higher energy of mars uranus you are tapping into courage to do so that's one way uh, maybe it takes courage to 
uh, change your place of living. And so you decide, you know what? I'm going to look into buying a property that has a garden. You know, and I'm going to leave this flat behind. I'm going to go to the bank and I'm going to, or I'm going to ring up a, um, a finance broker and find out where I can get the best deal. I'm going to actually take the car, you know, get courage to stop renting and start owning my own home. And that takes a, a hell of a lot of courage to do that sort of thing, if, especially if you're in circumstances where it requires a loan and that kind of stuff. So you, you have what it takes under this energy to, to bring courage and to bring a heroic <clears throat> warrior spirit to things to do, <coughs> excuse me, to do with family, home, domestic life, your heritage, your roots, your lineage and your community. So for uh, Pisces rising people, this week, the energy of tremendous volatility for you guys is falling in your third house. Now, this is on the 20th of January. We're having Mars conjunct Uranus. And then on the 21st, we've got the moon joining this couple. That's going to make it highly emotional, emotionally charged. And we're having a square expanding the whole deal from Jupiter. So big stuff. What does this actually mean? look like for Pisces people? Well, it means that in third house realms, you're going to want to break free from something. Maybe, you know, you've been running a small business and just all the requirements and the responsibilities and the busyness and the duty of your small business start to feel heavy now and you want to break free from that. You know, like, I, just, I wish I had an accountant or oh, I wish that I had a, a personal assistant and you just like, oh, I want to break free from all this admin and duty and tax procedures and stuff like that. And you want to break free from all those administrative tasks or maybe... This is a house of siblings. Maybe you've got a relationship with siblings that's a bit fraught and you're like, I just oh, just want to get out of this situation with my siblings and the relationship that I've got with them, which is just not healthy. I want to break free from that. This is also um, the house of, of writing, speaking, communicating, social media. A lot of Pisces people under this energy are going to say enough is enough with social media. They're going to be like, I'm off Facebook. I've had a gut full. Um, Twitter, forget it no more. So a lot of people are going to have ha have the desire to break free from something to do with those things. Maybe you've been writing a blog for years and under this energy you're like, no, nah, had enough. I want to break free from this. So but the breaking free can actually be a liberating thing. It can be a good thing. Don't sort of deny that energy within you, Pisces people. The key though to handling this energy well is whether we go to the shadow side or the light side of Mars Uranus conjunction energy. Now the shadow side, which is obviously what we want to avoid, the shadow side with this energy is feeling hot headed, re reactive, explosive. Um, it's an energy of, of rudeness and lack of patience. So how might this apply? Well, you might just lose patience with your business um, and just chuck it all in had enough, I can't do it all anymore, so I give up. Well, uh, that reactive response is probably highly irrational, you know, if your business has been going okay. Um, so irrational, reactive responses to sort of business or we get aggressive at, um, you know, maybe a, a sister or a brother who's been pissing us off and we let them have it and we tell them what we really think and um, we lose our shit with them. That can be a thing as well. Um, Hot-headed responses to, to those situations. Maybe a reactive response to uh, verbally and communicatively to a frustration that you're experiencing in life. You get on social media and you stick it to them. Or you write an article for a, your blog and it's really rude. And it's really um, divisive. And it's really impatient with something. Uh, some situation in life or some some theory or idea um, or this is also a house of small groups you might get really impatient with a small group you're involved in and even some friends under this influence as well and say screw you all you know and that hot-headed reactive response it's not going to be in your best interest and it's the negative side of this energy the positive side is to conduct yourself and to act with consciousness consciousness is to be aware 
to look at how you're feeling, to observe how you're thinking, to sort of detach and consider, okay, this is what I'm feeling, this is what I'm thinking, is that real, is that true, is that right? And then base your reaction on that weighing up, that assessment. That's living with consciousness and awareness. It's not hot-headed, it's not reactive. It takes a lot of energy and effort under this particular configuration to do so, but that's the higher road to take. To sort of think about, say, your relationship with your brother and your sister, and to think, okay, they are pissing me off and I am sick of the way they're treating me. Maybe I need to sort of sit down with them over a cup of coffee and just rationally tell them I'm feeling this way and it's really hurt me and leave the ball in their court or write them a letter or something that's considered and acting with consciousness rather than a hot-headed knee-jerk reaction. The good news about this is that this is the realm where you can channel the higher vibration of Mars Uranus which is courage which is heroism which is being um, brave so maybe you know you might need to be brave and start a website start a blog start a, a Facebook page or start a small business under this energy not that it's a good chart for starting something new per se but you can get the courage that you need to take the first steps to starting that business or that book that you want to write or that teaching course that you want to conduct you can get the courage that you need to, to jump in to have a crack so use that energy and you will be channeling the highest manifestation of this um, Mars Uranus combination and finally Aries rising people you have been very patient and I thank you for waiting till last the energy of Mars conjunct Uranus for Aries rising people is falling in the second house. Now that's happening on the 20th of January and on the 21st we've got the moon coming into the combination as well pretty soon after. Plus all of this is being squared by Jupiter. It's a biggie. And this is where you're going to want to break free. Second house things. You might want to break free from some sort of like imagine your home is full of stuff full of clutter full of you know bits and pieces and ornaments and all the dust collectors and what have you and you're like enough I've had enough of all this stuff I want to break free from this and you can have this desire I want to break free from all my stuff the other the other thing that um that the second house rules apart from stuff money finances banks you might want to break free from a loan that you've got with the bank or something under this energy um, the other things that the, the second house rules are self-worth and the opinion you have of yourself if you've got a low self-worth that might be something that you quite legitimately want to break free from some negative thinking some some inability to receive from others or the the inability to be to give or be generous you know and you're like you know I'm tired of being this way I want to break free from those thought patterns those behaviors those value systems that don't serve me anymore um, I want to break free from those things and though that's fine to want to break free that's this is not going to be an issue the the need to break free from those things sometimes that's really really healthy the issue with Mars conjunct Uranus is how we are going to break free and what energy we are putting to breaking free the shadow side of Mars Uranus energy is to be hot-headed to be volatile to be reactive to be rude to be impatient you might ring up the bank manager and say hey I'm not paying this anymore how dare you send me you know that demand for extra money if you you know that is totally inappropriate it is hot-headed responsive and not going to get you very far in life <laughs> um, and that's this energy unfortunately has that tendency towards a hot-headed rude response and that's for you guys going to be in connection to banks and finances stockbrokers and people like that it could be rude responses and you know impatient responses regarding all the stuff in your house you know you you've got ornaments everywhere gathering dust because your wife loves to collect them and one day you are just like I've had enough of this shit and you just get a big box and throw all her ornaments into the the box and you stick them out on the side of the road for rubbish collection 
well, that's not going to get you very far with your wife or your husband or whatever. Losing patience, acting rudely regarding possessions, regarding things that you have in, you know, as part of your physical bodily journey through life, you know, throwing out your, all your husband's shirts that he loves, you know, that's not going to be a good response to this energy just because you want to break free from all the clutter in the walk-in robe, um, you know, that kind of stuff. That's the shadow side of Mars, reactivity and volatility in, in this regard. The positive side is to act with consciousness. Okay, your husband might have a ton of daggy old t-shirts that you hate. Acting with consciousness here will be saying, okay, I'm observing that I hate those t-shirts, that I want to break free from the clutter in my walk in road. They are driving me bonkers. I need to ask him to go through his t-shirts and limit them to three instead of 10. Um, and, and you know you, you act with rationality you act with conscious awareness of what you're doing and how it's going to impact and affect other people you know you ring up the bank manager and you say I've been thinking about it and I'm really struggling to pay XYZ on my loan or you know some some issue with your bank account and I'd like to talk this through how can we resolve this you know that's acting with consciousness not reactivity so that's going to be harder to achieve under this energy but I want to encourage you to to grasp it if you can to go there if you can because you're going to be so much better off the energy of Mars conjunct Uranus can if you go down the hot-headed route can lead to accidents mistakes things that you utterly regret down the track but acting with consciousness will get you through and you, if you're acting with consciousness, you actually have the awareness of bringing in the highest manifestation of Mars Uranus connection, which is bravery, courage, taking a, a, a healthy risk. So it's in this realm that you can actually channel that higher energy and be brave and be courageous. Maybe it takes bravery to sit down with your partner and say, let's sort our stuff out because we want to go minimalist. Um, maybe it takes bravery to ring the bank manager and try and sort out some issue with the bank. Maybe it takes bravery to invest in the stock market for the first time ever and you've never done it before. So you ring up a stockbroker and say, look, I've got a little bit of money aside. I don't know. Where should I invest it? Um, it takes courage to do those things. Under this energy, you've you've got it there if you want to grasp it and take the courage to try something new to invest in something new to be brave about stepping out with some financial approach or a new way of earning money or a, 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 um, a new way of dealing with your possessions and your things maybe it might take courage to sell your old car and buy a new one maybe it might take courage to try and bring more security and stability into your life because this is a house of security and stability through whatever mechanism it might take courage to do that and remember again it is the house of values and how you value yourself how you receive from others as well it might take courage to say well hey I need some help you know can you assist me um, or it might take courage to go and do that self-help course that's going to change the the pattern of thinking you have around who you are and your place in the world and your identity that sense of self-worth it can take some courage to take the first steps to changing that so embrace courage and embrace heroism with this energy and you'll do so much better um, this week rather than giving in to the hot-headedness that's likely to rear its ugly head. Well, that is it in a nutshell for a, a rather interesting week. It's going to be very fascinating to sit back with the popcorn and observe what is going on in the world. I hope we're all here at the end of the week to, uh, to come back together for next week's Astro Weather Report. But for now, let me close with a prayer. Energy of love, surround us with your presence this week ahead. Help us to act with conscious awareness to make wise choices um, that come from the heart, that come from a, a, a energy of stability and awareness within us. Help us to bring love to the world this week because there's going to be a lot of need for it and a lot of hurt and a lot of wounding that will be exhibiting itself and help us to bring the light and love to all we meet and all we come in contact with. And so it is. Well, thanks for joining me. I'll catch you with another Astro Weather Report next week.